Hello, I'm Eric Novak, uh, Modern Media Perspectives, and as an automotive journalist and someone heavily involved in sustainability, it really is a pleasure for me to take this time in the aquarium uh, to interview and talk with uh, Flati Tlat sorry, Fati Tlatli, forgive me about that. You are the president uh, at Global Automobility Sector uh, Customer Solutions and Innovation at DHL. Uh, DHL, we all know that company, we've seen it in many aspects. Um, just to set a, a precedent, because we're obviously talking about mobility and sustainability, but DHL by the numbers, I, 550,000 employees. Uh, you operate in 220 countries. Uh, last year, your revenue, 61 billion euros. So you're not a small company. Uh, just as a refresher though, if, if you don't mind, for those who have seen DHL but don't fully understand, and we'll get into the sustainability questions in a second, but give me, a little bit more detail about DHL as a group. Yeah, we are actually a global leader in logistics uh, in this world. We operate in almost all the logistics activities from uh, express mm -hmm. activities to contract logistics to freight uh, forwarding uh, to road freight, so an integrated uh, supply chains. So the current DHL is the outcome of several acquisitions that uh, Deutsche Post from Germany okay. made in the years uh, 2000 and to 2010, I would say. Uh, more than 100 companies. And uh, the group gave the name DHL to all these different activities. Okay. So we are Deutsche Post DHL, the postal service in Germany and a few other places in the world, and the DHL Global Logistics brand. And we know things of uh, DHL Express, the courier, and you say it's the, 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 the postal service in the Deutschland and Germany. But when we talk about um, sustainable mobility for a company that is heavily involved in logistics and transportation as you are, this has to be very important. First of all, how would you say the idea of moving towards greater sustainability in mobility and transportation, how has it affected your sector in general at this point? So I would say that uh, sustainable mobility for us as a corporation and sustainability is a no-brainer uh, because we have a social responsibility right. uh, towards the citizens, towards our employees, towards our, our customers. And of course, there are also regulators and we partner uh, together with uh, different uh, corporations, with the regulators, uh, with the civil society in order to find the right sustainability solution. So as a, a group, uh, as of 2007, we had a target of 30% CO2 emission reduction by 2020. Okay. We reached that goal in 2016. Good. So we had all kinds of means. Of course, electrification was part of it, uh, alternative fuels, optimization of the supply chains, all kind of means that we leverage it in order to be able to deliver our targets. And now we have the bold target of uh, zero emission by 2050. So it, it's interesting to hear you say that you achieved your own personally set target years ahead of schedule. Um, there are companies who are moving towards more sustainable uh, operations because of legislation. The automotive sector is known to be sort of dragged versus pushing themselves. Yet it seems that you took the initiative on your own. Sustainability is of course a, uh, a necessary environmental issue, but it's also a smart business, a financial issue as well, is it not? Yeah. Actually, the theme of sustainability for us comes from the top. We have really our CEO really behind that as well as the board. So, uh, you know, sustainability is uh, not just actions, but also a mindset. So it right. really starts from a mindset. And just to let you know, at the moment, we have um, a program to educate our f more than 500,000 people towards uh, green logistics, go green program. So they, we have a webinar related to that. So that means that you know everyone in the company is starting to get engaged with that. And an example of that is that uh, at one point in time, we were asking a few OEMs whether they were ready to collaborate with us on a program to develop electric vans for last mile deliveries. Yep. And initially it was too early for them because the van was too functional. So we embarked on such a program with the uh, university and uh, eventually we co-developed uh, 
uh, what we call a street scooter, which is a last mile delivery van that is electric. Okay. Not only electric, but very ergonomic because operators contributed to do that. Now we have several thousands of these uh, vans in operation. And, uh, uh, you know, the last days we even had an agreement with uh, another company that is a competitor in Japan to uh, supply 500 of these electric vans. So it means that, you know, with these things, you need to be sometimes proactive right. and, and a catalyzer. And by last point, what sort of distances are we talking about where the transfer would happen to, say, an electrified uh, vehicle? So uh, if you take that, it's more for urban deliveries. Okay. So normally uh, you have, you know, you have around 20 kilometers, 30 mm -hmm. kilometers per day. You have several stops. So this is uh, very convenient. We have also solutions like follow me robots. So it means, uh, or, or follow me automated guided right. vehicles. So that means that, you know, when uh, 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 you have some areas that are limited to traffic, then you may have this uh, device following uh, right. the operator from house to house uh, and, uh, and doing the job. Given the size of your company and, and the amount of uh, fleet or the size of fleet you would have, I'd also think you'd probably have a bit of influence in pushing OEMs to start producing uh, the vehicles that you need. Yeah. So for example, if we talk about uh, this program, of course now we entered into a partnership with an OEM mm -hmm. to co -de develop, to co-produce that because our aim is not to be a car producer. Our right. aim is to be, we are in logistics, our aim is to be excellent simply delivered in, 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 in logistics and supply chain. But it's important if we want to reach our aim of zero emissions, to have the right activities in place. So therefore, you know, we partner. We also work with the right uh, solutions according yeah. to the environments where we operate. So you may have hydrogen fuel cell activities. Right. Uh, in can be markets like Japan or wherever. Where yeah. uh, you may have uh, uh, compressed uh, uh, gas or liquid gas uh, solutions or, or uh, fuel uh, 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 energy, for example, in the Nordics, uh, in, in, in uh, the north of Europe. Mm -hmm. So according to the markets oh, and to the infrastructure available, we may embark on solutions that are mostly appropriate. I mean, with 220 countries operating, and you're right, not every, there's not one size fits all for every market and such. Um, another area, I mean, obviously we talk about the ground logistics, but you have to get products um, across uh, oceans and, and large areas. So you obviously have to be concerned about the uh, sustainable initiatives in other forms of transportation as well. Flying, uh, shipping, things like that. What sort of uh, initiatives are working in those areas? So I have to say that the future of transport is multimodal. So you have, for example, the movements by train. Mm -hmm. So these movements are getting important, certainly between China and Europe and vice versa. Of course. So as a uh, possible alternative to ocean freight or whatever. So we, of course, work on all different uh, tracking activities and different modes from the last miles to the long haul. Mm -hmm. We are even testing long haul electric uh, vans. Uh, what is also important is to optimize the supply chains. Right. Very often when you optimize the flows, you reduce the costs. Of course. And, and this is uh, beneficial to, to everyone. In addition to that, we need to integrate the transportation with the other activities of the supply chain. Some of them are the operations, the warehouses, mm -hmm. and we uh, embarked on programs of green warehouses, uh, highly digital, where you are able to monitor all kinds of conditions and proactively find solutions. Well, when you're talking about proactive, uh, with a company employing almost half, more than half a million people, I, I'd like to think that there are initiatives and ideas that come from the bottom up. And I, and I think, do you often f get feedback from, from anyone from the person in the warehouse to the driver all the way on up? I mean, this point is uh, very relevant. When you, know, you start such a program with such a mindset, then you have much more in ideas eventually that you can then elements you can implement, right, <laughs> which yeah. is which is great. So we also embarked on some programs uh, where we uh, co-develop uh, incubators, okay. or startups uh, on uh, sustainable mobility, mm -hmm. and then you you get uh, hundreds of ideas. And 
several of them, you know, get implemented in our operation. One of them is, for example, solar panels that you will put on tracks uh, that help you uh, creating energy on the track. And interestingly... So and churning, I, I, so a yeah. regenerative system. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and actually, the last days, I've heard that uh, a Dutch company produced a solar energy car. So I believe that also, we don't talk much about that, but the solar energy can be a very interesting energy among other ones in the future. There, ha there has to be collaboration. For as much as you're so large, um, you're not the only uh, logistics company, you're not the only courier, you're not the only uh, letter mail carrier company. It, it makes sense in some respects to even work with competitors, would it not? Yeah, so in this world, you know, cooperation is key. So, you know, you need to cooperate with citizens, mm -hmm. uh, civil societies, with companies. You need to uh, cooperate with customers because you need to be customer-centric and work with them, mostly corporate customers. But also, you cooperate with the technology companies right. and on some uh, shared routing, possibly with competitors, providing that you know the legislations allow uh, such a corporation but i can see an example of that for example you will come to cities and for the last mile delivery you would have urban consolidation centers where every logistics provider would bring its good to that urban consolidation center that will be massified and then uh, delivered to the last mile with a much better load factor even, you could even probably get, if you're getting to super concentrated, I mean, you're Belgian, some of the uh, Belgian cities that I've been to, like get where in the core businesses are in very narrow streets. Maybe you're even talking about bicycle or, or e-bikes or mopeds as, as a possibility. Yeah, absolutely right, in cities like, for example, even Amsterdam. Yes. You use bo boats, you use right. uh, 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 QB cycles. QB cycles are also bikes where you have a small urban container, and that helps you uh, delivering your goods in uh, pedestrian areas or areas uh, where you cannot exceed easily with car. We can also in the future think of uh, more than that. You may have uh, automated guided vehicles, small vehicles that would eventually go to where the people are, but also solutions like parcel lockers. We have that in cities like Bonn or wherever, where you deliver the goods in a locker and then people can exceed these locals in a timely way. We're, we're running low on time, but in a sort of a 30 second answer, could you talk about, I know you have a 2050 goal, but what's the next one or three years or five years of de development moving towards sustainability look like for you? So first, uh, we are going to enhance our electrification programs and these through street scooters for the last mile are an emblematic element. We work also in uh, more sustainability in our operations, mm -hmm. in our supply chains, in terms of uh, emissions reductions in all what we do in terms of warehousing and all these kind of activities. And then all kind of concrete programs, like for example, renewing part of our aircraft fleet okay. with the uh, uh, aircraft uh, that are having, uh, of course, new aircraft, less yeah, emissions. absolutely. But where you have uh, a nice return on investment middle to long term. So people need to look at it now, not just short term, but they need to have a longer term approach that is definitely paying off. Of course, it's a virtual uh, uh, circle, customer centric, ecological, and of course, bringing the right uh, convenience and at the right costs. Well, I think it's great because with a company of your size and influence, the fact that you're taking such a proactive stance, it's ultimately going to be a, um, a, a net benefit for the industry at large, and it's great to see leadership uh, such as what you have. So I certainly want to thank you for the time that you've had. I've really enjoyed speaking to you, and uh, and this has been a lot of fun. So thank you very much, Flatty. My pleasure. Yeah, this has been a lot of fun, and of course, we're here at Moving On in Montreal, learning more about mobility and some interesting facts uh, from DHL. So thank you so much. Au revoir, merci beaucoup. Thank you.